So today we're gonna talk about related rates. Chris, thank you. <laughs> your voice is loud. So related rates in your class comes in the same chapter with implicit differentiation. But to make it easier, I did split it for you into two reading. Implicit differentiation related rates 2.8 in, in this book, which is fine. It's actually very interesting. We're gonna do some biology today, yeah. And it will be fun. I always talk about trees when I teach related rates. Just because, why not? It's fun. So the tree is the topic called related rates. And I'm going to teach you for the first time how do we go into three dimensions. We're not going to do three-dimensional calculus, but it's a sneak peek for you how rates can be related through the third variable. For example, time. In this case, look at my beautiful picture of the tree. You can also make your own. It even has a hole here for the owl and apples. And the tree is growing up. So there's a whole science, biological science made that the tree has connection with the size of the trunk. Some trees go tall, some trees go wide. And that's interesting connection. And I found some random formula in front of you. I just randomly Googled the formula for some kind of random tree. And it told me the relationship for that particular tree is age, which is height, equals three quarters r, which is the radius of the trunk, raised to the one half. This is some random formula. So different trees have different formulas which make relationship between, a correlation between trunk and the height. For you to understand, which it was very interesting when I was learning this, to me it was pretty fascinating to find out that you look at a tree and a tree is growing up. So the height of the tree that's called H, capital H. Depends on the time T. You can back in five years, it's tall. So you definitely notice that, that is H. But then the other thing you don't notice, but it's obvious that the trunk is also growing. The trunk is a circle with the radius R. And the radius also depends on time T. So you came back in five years and the trunk is taller, is wider. So we have two rates and both of them are related through time through the third variable. So it looks something like this, if you want to see the correlation. The height, the height of the tree, H, and the tr radius of the trunk. Why it's so big? Maybe the same. The radius of the trunk, both are related through the third variable, T. And it's a third dimension for you. Everything is correlated, like so many things can be called to be correlated. The temperature around you related to the how often do you breathe. Maybe you making the air around you hotter by breathing a lot. And so on. So the many things are happening right now. Not only the height of the tree is growing with time t, but the trunk is growing as well. And here's a nice example. So the study actually happens like so, biology department or plant science department, uh, which is also, I forgot the big, the larger structure of the department, uh, hyperculture, yes? Yes. Uh, they hire students, usually undergraduate students, and they say, go to this little forest we are renting and measure all the trunks. And they do, they go and they get paid for it. They measure all the trunks and give the statistical data. So that's how this correlation is being created. It's not made up. And I always tell the interesting uh, story about the upset, it's upsetting story, so for you to know, especially if you like trees. The tree called Prometheus was killed accidentally by a student for the research purposes, and then only when it got cut off, they found out it was older than 5,000 years. At that moment, it was the oldest tree known on Earth at that time, in 1964. So that a graduate student requested permission to cut the tree, and uh, they did not check well enough. They gave him permission. He cut it off, and then now he's in the Wikipedia page because he's like the most upsetting greatest student in the world who cut off the old tree. It was the oldest tree at the moment. It's called Prometheus tree, uh, and they call it Prometheus after for the god, you know that, and so on. So it's very interesting that uh, he was doing dendrochronology, the science, and he was doing graduate school. So later they found older trees, but still it was very upsetting that the tree was growing for 5,000 years and then some kind of American graduate student, it's in Nevada, cut it off. So that's interesting, but the study is very interesting and since it's what it was already cut off 
they used the slices and send them to all research labs. So Tucson has a huge slice. If you go to this university in Tucson, University of Arizona, I saw it there because I was accepted to the PhD program, but I did not accept the offer though. But I went there and I saw this huge slice and you're standing in front of it and it, you see all the ages, Second World War, the First World War, and then you go back in time there. It's pretty cool. You see where there was fires through the circles. So then the chronology is an interesting study. Question one, how fast does a tree grow with respect to the radius R? WRT is a nice English abbreviation for with respect to. So I keep using it because it's short. With respect to. Uh, the question is, so let's find out if we have a formula in front of us. How fast does a tree grow with respect to the radius of, of the trunk? Radius of the trunk. We have a formula in front of us. It's above over there in blue. So it means they want us to use the formula. Let's call it a star. Oh, that's why I have a star there. Let's call it star. So to call a formula a name, you can do like so. Let's call it one. We can call it check mark. But the convenient one is called a star, like so. Then the notation says, from the star, it follows. That's how you scientists like to say. How fast, you now you know the keywords. I taught you the keywords. How fast means we want to do what? <coughs> how fast, you're almost right. How fast, synonym of what? Derivative. derivative. So you want to differentiate. And that is a synonym of derivative. How fast something is changing, velocity, acceleration, second derivative, marginal for business students. All these are synonyms, instantaneous of rate of change, synonyms of derivative. So even if you know what the heck is going on, you know that they ask you to take a derivative. They ask you to find dh with respect to t, so dt. In calculus three, this is important because we work in four or five dimensions there. And this with respect to is different. With respect to t, with respect to h, with respect to g, gravitational forces, with respect to the vector and stuff. So let's differentiate. We know how to do that. We know the power rule, three quarters times one half goes down. Copy your r raised to the negative one half power. All agree? Just taking derivative of that function in blue, which I just called a star. If I rewrite it, it's going to be 3 over 8 a square root of r. So radius have to be positive. Makes sense. It's the radius of the trunk. But as you can see, in this answer, there is no time t in the answer. Um, so it be h over r? h over, oh, you're right. Sorry about that. That's true. So yeah, I looked at the second line already. With respect to dr, like so. It is h prime t, right? h prime t, but that now it matters with respect to what we're taking. Yeah, good catch. So there's no time t here because we're differentiating with respect to r. Yes, good catch. Now, put this in the box. So this is answer number one. We just found the speed of the speed of h with respect to the r. So they have a correlation. The taller, the wider. So, makes sense. What if I'm asking the same question, but the ending is different? Question two. How fast does the tree grow? I skipped writing that. Does the tree grow with respect to time t? So, apparently, it matters. The ending matters. If I'm asking with respect to the radius, it will be dh over dr. If I'm asking with respect to time, it will be dh with respect to time. Let's see how it is different and why it, this chapter is located in the chapter of implicit differentiation and will require chain rule, your favorite thing. So, what's the, such a big difference here? The previous one required the chain rule? Not yet, you, you will see why. Let's start differentiating. The beginning is the same, three quarters because it's a constant. One half goes down. R, let's call it R of t this time, that is important, is raised to the negative one half. Before we stopped, because we were only differentiating with respect to R, now we're differentiating with respect to t. So in this case, we 
reminding ourselves that R now depends on T. While before that was not the case, chain rule, chain rule tells you, please don't stop, and also find the derivative of R with respect to time T, because T, as you can see on those circles, is nested inside of H and R. Now you have the answer, we can simplify it, but the most important part, we have the answer that, re that involves, that's a good word, involves two rates, just a second, this rate and this rate. One rate is with respect to one rate of the height of the growing tree with respect to time, and the other rate is the width of the growing trunk of the radius, or the trunk of the growing tree. With respect to time, they are called related rates. Let me put it in red. These are called related rates. <coughs> and they are related through the third dimension, common variable or related variable, time. How is it related through time? This is how. Here's the equation. So it's the first time you see equation with two rates at the same time. Yes? No, actually, I think I understood it now. I was wondering why we didn't use the chain rule the first time. It's because the thing inside only goes down the one. For the first time, the red color R equals R of H was not there. The For the first time, we one. just thought of H as a function 3 quarters times R to the 1 half. For the second time, the difference is H dependent on T now. If you want to see it like so, it depends on R and then depends on T. Yeah, I think I understand. Yeah, yeah, I just I want to write I down. Like and depends on T. I just like a different way of thinking about it. Now it's three quarters, R depends on T to one half. And that is a difference, so versus. The deeper you go, the more general you use. That's kind of the idea. The more related rates can be used. <coughs> and now you'll have to do the homework about this. And one of these questions always goes to the um, exam. Usually we put either the balloon question on a test or a circle, uh, which is, I will tell you in a second. So it's very typical questions. You will have homework about the letters sliding down the wall, the shadow moving. I'll give you a hint. You can Google all those questions. But I also have YouTube videos on all of these questions, and they are all solved in my videos. So I'll make you, I'll send you the list of videos. You can follow them and do your homework. So very typical made in the United States types of questions about related race chapter. Yes. Yeah, thank you for telling this. Let me know if I'm scrolling too fast. And now keep, let's write down. So the, the annoying problem is, uh, it's fun to have application problems, but you have to write them down. The volume of a spherical balloon, we know that. We expect, we don't expect you to remember this formula, so I will give you on the test the formula of the volume. But technically speaking, as a scientist, you're the one who go and Google the formula of the volume of the sphere, which is 4 3rd pi r cubed. How fast does the volume change when radius is 10 if the radius is increasing at a rate of 4 centimeters per minute? And now I will teach you how to read this fast. I think I told you before, maybe it was not you. I always try to mention that as a English as a second language, I had to, student, I had to learn how to read fast. I like when the equation is given. So my eyes, they keep looking for, they seeking for the math equation. I see equation, I know how to differentiate, integrate, solve the equation. If I see no equations, it freaks me out. So I had to teach myself how to read English fast and seek for important information. Some of you also have English as a second language, for example, many Spanish speaking students and stuff. And that's why I like teaching it. I think many people actually do appreciate it at some point. Let's learn how to read this fast. The volume of the sphere, okay, the sphere is given, let me Google the volume of the sphere formula. And I Google it and I learned that this is it. So in general, you're supposed to learn it yourself. Then they say, how fast? Okay, how fast is a synonym of doing what? Finding the derivative. So they want me to differentiate something, but what? As you remember from the previous example, we might have two rates, derivative of h, or derivative of r. Both are rates. How fast, blah, blah, blah. So now you have to find this term that stays after the how fast. How fast does the volume change? Oh, okay. So they want me to differentiate the volume. Do you see how I'm reading this? 
How fast the volume changes change. So they wanted me to find dv with respect to how fast with respect to time. So this is the one we don't know. This is how you read it. Then related rates problems should give you uh, um, information about two rates. One will be given, the other one will be not given. So this one is the one that's not given. That means there should be another rate in this problem which is given. Let's find it. I see two numbers, 10 and 4. 10 and 4. The radius is 10. Is this rate of change or not? No, the radius is fixed. It's a constant 10 centimeters. Here's the radius. So this, I can just write down, radius is 10. No derivatives. However, the next phrase, look at this phrase. It says, the radius is increasing. If you see words increasing, decreasing, or at a rate, or the per. Remember I told you, if you see per or slash, that is a good hint that this is derivative. So the radius is increasing, blah, 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 per. That gives me a hint that this is dr with respect to t, which is 4. I see two related rates, volume and radius. One is given, one is unknown, and radius is 10. This is enough to solve the problem. This is how, how you should read fast and no free, not freak out during the exam. So let's write it down. What do we have? We have two rates dv over dt and dr over dt. Uh, you can if you want to understand the problem. Of course, it's pretty interesting that there's a balloon. It's a spherical balloon. And you know, you keep inhaling it, it's keep growing. When the balloon is keep growing, right? Uh, not only the volume of the balloon is keep growing, but also the radius. So these are nice examples of two related rates. Radius is increasing, the volume is increasing, surface area is increasing, the pressure inside of the balloon is increasing. So there's lots of things which are related with respect to time. In this case, we only choose two. Since we give you simple problems, there are usually two rates. They're related through time. One is given, the other one is asked to find. We learned that this one they want me to find, and this one is given. How uh, the radius is increasing or decreasing or changing as four centimeters per minute. This one is given, centimeters per minute. Find how fast the volume is changing. That one is not given. And then they gave me a moment in time. The thing is the balloon is keep increasing. At some moment, they want me to stop and plug the radius. They said, find how fast it's changing when the radius is 10. So like maybe over here, they want me to stop and check the speedometer kind of idea. So R is given as 10. This one you will plug at the end. And now I'll tell you that actually it's not a very uh, bad thing to learn. Students usually don't like related race problems. They don't like reading, but uh, when it comes to solving, it's actually not too bad. Step one, write down the formula. If you don't have it, find it. If you, they give you the formula, well, you're lucky. Here it is, 4 thirds pi r cubed. Write down the formula. Step two, implicit differentiation stop, starts now. Implicit differentiation, but the easy case. Implicit differentiation says, you know what, differentiate everything. Keeping in mind then volume and radius are variables. They depend on the third dimension, t. dv with respect to t equals 4 thirds, constant stays, times pi stays. 3 goes down, r squared times by the chain rule. Remember, every time you have to deal with y, y prime pops out. Same thing here. r is a function of t, so it will be dr with respect to t. Here is the equation which represent represents related rates, two rates. Rate of the volume of the balloon is related with the rate of the radius of the balloon with respect to time and in this equation, which you can simplify by the way, but 
So step two, you differentiate everything you see. That's what implicit differentiation was. Implicit differentiation was given for. Now you plug in only after step two, plug in. The thing is, what do we plug in? Radius is 10. If you plug in radius too early, uh, there will be no variable r. So you will not be differentiating r if r is 10 cube. So we have to know what the is. We have to that. Yeah, we're also going to plug that. But only now you can plug 10. So if you plug it too early, you will mess up the whole idea that the radius is changing. Only when we figure out how it's changing. Now you can plug in the moment in time radius 10. And we also have, so I would say like this, plug in 10 for visual effect, I will just show you like so dv over dt is pi 10 squared dr over dt this is actually a formula that represents two related rates and now especially for the exam i can either ask you to find rate on the left or right on the right. So you have to read carefully. I either can ask you to find what, how fast the volume is changing, that's what they ask us to find, or how fast the radius is changing. Those are equally prob equal problems, to be honest. So you have to read carefully and find out which one is given and which one is not. dr dt is 4. So now I can plug in 4 into the radius. It's going to be, I will do like so from here 4 times pi times pi times 10 squared times 4 maybe because it's sinking no it's fine and that opens up to 1600 pi did you calculate it 1600 pi 1600 pi what are the units who knows First of all, oh yeah, let me write down the unit. Who knows any units? Yes? Cm cubed per, per minute. S centimeters? Centimeters cubed per minute. Cubed per minute. Agree, disagree, comment. So volume should be cubed, that makes sense. Time was given in minutes. Per showed out from differentiation. Yes? Um, when you're differentiating a problem, I like to see what I think it was of your movie. Yeah. Um, why did like four squared times You only differentiated like the. Oh, because the good question. The constants were multiplied, multiplied by r. If they are standing outside like so, then pi will give you zero. But because they are multiplied, they will contribute to the rate of increase. So four, four thirds pi times r cube will stay because it's a constant multiplied by the variable. So it's like, what is the derivative for 5x squared? 5 times 2x. Same thing here. 4 thirds and pi survived, and then 3 goes down, r squared times chain rule. Yeah, good question, good job. More questions, what do you think? Is the function increasing or decreasing? The volume, because actually they never told us. They said, how fast does the volume change? Do you think from this answer you know? It's positive. So. The derivative is positive, means the original function is increasing. 1600 pi is positive. Good job. And because of that, we know that the original function is increasing. And also because it makes sense. Uh, if radius is increasing, then the volume is increasing. But still, we know we're, we're talking about balloon. So you need to justify on a test, for example, that derivative of the volume with respect to t end up to be positive. So if it ends up to be negative, it's correct. It means something is decreasing. So this is a very good problem for the exam. We do like to put this one. And uh, the other one is, this is 3D, the balloon is keep increasing. And the other one is in 2D, which is the oil leak on the ocean. If there's an oil leak on the ocean, it's actually a perfect circle, which is also spreading like so. Well, I'm not saying it's a perfect circle, but we will assume. And it's exactly the same idea, but now it's 
um, areas keep increasing and the radius is keep increasing and you can calculate how fast you remember it was like five ten years ago a huge leak close to California the people could predict how fast it will reach California so they were evacuating people and animals because they could calculate the rate of change of both the area and the radius and the current also was involved those are related rates part B how fast does the radius change when the radius is 8 centimeters if the volume is increasing at the rate of 10 centimeters per minute? Again, lots of wording, lack of math. How to read it fast? Let me teach you one more time. How to teach you read English fast. How fast? I know that this is derivative of something. The next word somewhere should be that something. How fast the radius change? Also, change is also a keyword for derivative. Oh, so now they want me to find dr over dt is not known. And you can write it down below right away. dr with respect to t is the one we're looking for this time. When the radius is 8 centimeters. You see, I don't see centimeters per. So I'm assuming that this is not rate. When the radius is 8. So again, this is r equals 8. I'll write down r is 8. I'll write it down below because there should be one more rate. I'm expecting the other some kind of rate happening. If the volume is increasing at the rate of 10 centimeters per minute, again, I see it's a second rate. This time it's the volume is increasing. This gives me a hint that this is derivative of the volume or the per part. So dv with respect to t. It's given us 10. This is enough to solve the problem. That's why it's different. <laughs> right? But the formula is the same. The problem is the same. Everything is the same. But this is, I want to show you A versus B on the exam. I'm either going to be choosing this or that one. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, let's do the steps. Step one, write down the formula. They're still talking about the volume of the sphere, which is given by 4 thirds pi r cube and r depends on t. So volume depends on time t. Radius depends on time t. That is the third dimension we're including into the problem. And that's why they call it related rates. Step two, differentiate everything you see. dv with respect to t. 4 thirds pi 3r squared times the r with respect to t. It's exactly the same what we did before. You can plug your r. r is new now. r is 8. So I will have dv with respect to t equals, let's simplify 3 and 1 third, 4 pi 8 squared dr with respect to time t. And now you have a very nice example. This is the formula, which now is ready. And we need to know which one we need to find. Are we looking for this rate or for this rate? And that's how they call related rates. Let me write down once. Related rates. How are they? They are rates because they're derivatives. And they're related through time and this equation. And now. We go back and you see, oh, this time we're looking for the radius change. So let's plug dv over dt as 10. In this case, 10 equals 4 pi times 8 squared times dr over dt. And you just have to have extra step in before. Just solve for the unknown rate. How do we solve for the rates? How do we solve for the unknown, isolated, divide, and so on? So I will divide by... 4 pi 8 squared, and I'll have dr over dt equals 10 over everything else. And if you simplify, you simplify. Uh, okay, fine. I will write down, I like exact answers. 10 over 5258 pi. Exact answers are better for science pur purposes. Then, uh, no, it's a 6. 6 which is 5 over 1 highest 2, 8 pi, which is approximately, what did you say? Uh, approximately 0 0.01243. 1, 2, 4, 3. Z uh, 0. Mm -hmm. Like so. Units, 
CM or CM permit. CM per minute. Why not cube? Because it's not a volume. All agree? Radius is not in centimeters cubed, but per minute is the same because we differentiate with respect to time, and time was in minutes. Let's put this in the box. What else can you say? You can notice it's positive. So the radius is indeed increasing. So that should match the idea that the radius is increasing because we are working with the increasing balloon because we're inhaling the balloon kind of this is all i wanted to show you for the quiz how do you think what do you think about that really the rays have cool problems i will give you my notes there's a falling sand when you fall the sand the height is increasing and the length is increasing of the sand <coughs> there's a of course this very famous problem of the street light and the shadow of the person and then I have all the solutions for you, and this is your homework, so you can just uh, use this for your homework. And it's fun. It's fun. It's some biological applications, and you should like it. <laughs> I think so.